This week in the field, first impressions of a location. Are they always the best or is there something better? Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In the Field. Thanks for joining me. Real quickly, in about two weeks, invitations to register for 2018 photo workshops are going out. If you'd like to join me on a workshop, head on over to my website, get yourself on the reserve list. That's like putting yourself in line, saving your place. And uh, then you'll be able to join me next year. It'll be really great. I'm looking forward to uh, another round of fun workshops. They're usually a, a good time. So today's uh, topic is first impressions. And uh, you know, like the old adage, you know, you, you can never get a second chance to make a first impression. Uh, what made me think about this topic was I was looking through this uh, tiny bit of footage that I'll share with you in a moment of this uh, natural rock archway in uh, in Japan. This was um this was the place that I went to just before Sendojiki Rocks I showed you last week. And uh, there were a couple of different compositions I played with. Um, let me show you the footage, and then I'll show you a couple of the compositions that I've done to uh, tell you, talk about you know, how my uh, perception of the location changed over time. I'm in Shirahama, Japan, in uh, Wakayama Prefecture, and have hopes for a good sunset tonight. This actually just I'm stopping here on my way to another location. I visited here last night and took some basic shots. A little bit of a nicer sky. I'm gonna get in uh, a little tighter on this one, something in the 70 millimeter range or so, and do a, do a bit of a sweep, really just focusing on this arched rock. Uh, it, it has a name I cannot recall <laughs> at the moment, something something island, but uh, it looks great. And with the nice glow off to the northwest, uh, this, this should be a nice evening shot. If I wait too much longer, I'll lose the detail on the uh, the side of this island facing me that's not going to be in, in sunlit. So let me get busy, get set up, and then get to my other location for tonight. All right, I'm firing right now. Uh, I am using my polarizer mainly because I needed a filter bracket, and it was the one that I had. I'm using a six stop, and that is so as I do a sweep with the pano and go across from here to here, I'm going to smooth out the water. That's going to make the stitching job a lot easier. Kind of going from about here all the way across to there, minus the, the railing and the guardrail. Setup is straightforward on the tripod, mounted vertically, and I'm just up against the seawall here. I came uh, off of the, the ground there, the shore level, up here, because I'm only focusing on this interesting island. The foreground was becoming more distracting than anything else, so I'll be using a lot of the sky and uh, trying to make that into negative space to uh, emphasize my subject. So what's interesting about this, uh, this experience to me is that my perception of the scene changed several times, and not just while I was there, also based on some of the processing that I've done after the fact. So of the, the, the two different types of shots that I took there, one was you know down more at sea level, in and among the rocks. I liked that a lot more compositionally. I had interesting foreground, nice mid-ground, a good glow in the background, of course the arched rock there. Uh, but um, because of all of that uh, darker material in the foreground, you know, the, the, the image was, you know, process it in a more moody fashion. So it's, you know, it's dark, maybe even a little ominous. Uh, but then when I did the other shot, you know, which was uh, more of a pano, but really just kind of getting in tighter on the arch itself and really just making the shot about that interesting piece of land and then just the surrounding context, uh, I wasn't as happy with that composition. But then when I did the processing, my mind changed, and uh, I processed it in such a way that it was it was lighter, it was airier, uh, it had a um, a more warmer, inviting feeling to it. And when I look at the two side by side, uh, I. I'm torn. I, on one hand, I look at it from like you know a um, you know a technical compositional perspective and like one, and then I look at it just sitting back and going, hmm, which photo do I like better? Which one makes me happier? Which one makes me want to go there? I, I tend to lean toward the the, the brighter, airier one. And so I suppose the point of all this and the tip of the week is that first impressions can be deceiving, and they may or may not always be right, or they might be right for 
part of the story and not the full story. Uh, it's uh, another reminder to me how ambiguous and subjective photography can be. And I'll bet if I were to go and look at these photos again in six months or even process them differently, I'll end up with two other photos that, you know, same same subjects, but uh, with another feeling to them. And, you know, time has gone on. And so, you know, it may be a fonder remembrance as opposed to something that happened a couple of months ago. And that will wrap up this week's In the Field Short and Sweet. If you enjoyed it, let me know somehow. Comments on the video below are great. Uh, social shares are always appreciated. Anytime you tell a friend about this channel and you know say, hey, you know, Scott's a good guy. You're getting some value out of this. Really appreciate that. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport, and happy shooting. I don't really care about that. You probably don't care about that either. I'm definitely cutting that out. That's stupid too. I'm just full of stupid ideas today. <laughs> that might be the only kind I have.